Gospel of October the 20th, 2016 A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke Jesus said to his disciples, I have come to set the set on fire, and how I wish it were already blazing. There is a baptism with which I must be baptized, and how great is my anguish until it is accomplished. Do you think that I have come to establish peace on the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on a household of fire will be divided, three against two and two against three. A father will be divided against his son, and a son against his father, a mother against her daughter, and a daughter against her mother, a mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Gospel of the Lord, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Also from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that he may grant you in accord with the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with power through the, his Spirit in the inner self, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the holy ones what is the breadth and length, height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. All right, so first of all, let us dwell a little bit in the Gospel. Today we are being reminded that the offering of God to us, to you and me, is eternal life. Now, think about this for one second. How expensive is it to have those creams, especially those Europe European creams, that will help you avoid the wrinkles in your face. Some of those creams cost $500, others three, four, five thousand dollars a cream. And then you have all kinds of surgical operations, static operations, that seem to be like preventing you from becoming old. And that will be worth only a, a few months couple of years, perhaps 10, 15 years, that you might look younger, but you are not going to be younger. You might look younger, that's all. How much would you pay to get back to when you were 21, to when you were 18 years old, or one whole full year? How much would you pay? Perhaps many of you would pay as much as you could. Now imagine that not for one year, that you could get back to your 18 years old, to your 21 years old, for a whole 10 years. How much would you pay? For a hundred years? To be, remain the same exact situation, healthy and everything else? Imagine then, what is it worth to be eternally young? To be resurrected, and not only young, but to be eternally in love, eternally happy. This is far more than we can even conceive. And this is what the Lord is offering you and me. But that offer, in order for you and me to resurrect, we must first be dead. And our dying will happen in the Via Crucis, that is the way of the cross. There is no other way. If you want to be resurrected, we have to go along the path of the Christ in the way of the cross. So the Lord is reminding us today, I have come to set the earth on fire. What kind of fire is he talking about? Well, the fire that he is talking about is the fire of the Holy Spirit that burns but does, does not destroy, does not consume, rather purifies and strengthens. But He, the Holy Spirit and the Lord and our Father, will not subject us to the fire of the Holy Spirit without our willing will, without ourselves willing that. So it is only when we open up our hearts, when we decide that we want to embrace the love of God, that we might be cleansed, that we might be set afire in the love of God, not before. Then the Lord says, 
There is a baptism which I must receive, and how great is my anguish until it is accomplished. The Lord was getting to know very clearly everything that was going to happen to him. There, in his conscience, it is his human conscience, the one that is speaking about anguish. Certainly it's not his divine conscience, because he knows in his divine conscience what is going to happen, but not in his human conscience. Perhaps all that he saw at the time was that he had to die, and the promise of the Father to have him resurrected. But he knew that he had to die, and he was in anguish, very much as you would and I would. So he suffered that also. Not only the cross and the, in the Passion, but even before. Then he goes on to say, Do you think that I came to establish peace? No, but division. How come that he wants to be our families divided? Well, unfortunately, because of our freedom, there will be some of us in our household that will reject him, perhaps for a time, perhaps forever, God forbid. And if you love your family more than God, then you are not worthy of God. You have to love God first. And then even let me tell you something. If you think that you love your family and then God, you don't have love at all, neither for your family nor for God. All you have would be this wanting, I want my family, but not love my family. Only with the love of God will I, will I love rightly, not before. If I put first the love of God, and much more important, if I allow Him to fill me with His love, then with that very same love I can love everyone else. But if I do not have the love of God, I cannot love anyone, not even myself. Paul writes rightly and very, and very well when he tells us that he kneels before the Father, that we might be strengthened with the Holy Spirit and Christ, that we might be able to know to experience the love of Christ for us. When we experience that love, then we truly start living. Then we truly start fulfilling our lives. Not before. There's absolutely nothing that could compare. Absolutely nothing. And not even the whole universe combined could suffice to account for even half of that joy of that plenitude of the love of Christ. It is not that God is inviting us to suffer in the way of the cross. Yes, we will suffer, but there will be the strength and the power, the love and the peace to go step by step, growing in faith, growing in certainty that we will be able to accomplish what God wants of us. Let us pray for each other, dear brothers that we should not be afraid even to suffer for a time the division of our own household. Let us pray for each and every one of our families and through all the children in the world, through the world, which are the children of God, our brothers. Until we meet in heaven, God bless you all, brothers.